hey guys, it's quote unquote your boy, Ballface8020, uh, back continuing my obviously pathological obsession with Casey Zander. Um, okay, sorry about that picture. That yeah, I'm gonna get rid of that as quick as I can. Um, yeah, uh, this video actually, a few fans had mentioned this to me. Um, and I, I was vaguely familiar with it before, but I, I just tonight watched the whole thing for the first time. Um, I like it. I think it gives a, you know, a window into Casey's madness. He says some sort of interesting things in here. Um, I guess, you know, before we start, I just like to say, like, I just want to, like, go back over, like, what happened to Casey like, if you've been following this whole saga, like, we all know who Casey, those of you who've been watching, know what he's like now. If you've seen the last video, you've seen uh, what he used to be like. And then we've got, you know, his other, his backstory, he used to be a nerd, turned himself into a chad, whatever. Um, so, you know, we're trying to really figure out, um, at least I am, I think most people don't care, as they shouldn't, what happened. Like, what happened to change Casey from, you know, a boring but normal 20-year-old, you know, running a successful fitness, uh, having success as an online fitness trainer into a, you know, miserable, douchey um, red pillar. And I think this video gives us some hints um, and before I saw this, I was thinking of a couple of other things. I was thinking it's possible that there was a very bad breakup. Um, after seeing this video, I'm thinking that's not what happened. Um, the other is, I can't, I can't remember what, I can't remember what the other was. The, um, uh, who cares? Um, let's just, let's just get this thing started. Okay, there's no Uncle C today. Okay, there, there's none of that. This is a ridiculously serious video because for any of you guys looking how to develop your masculine frame, how to develop your charisma, become successful, understand male versus female dynamic, level up in business, this video is for you. Because I told you guys I was about to get really personal from now on on these videos. Because most people know exactly what I'm about, but you don't know how I did it. You don't know how I got there. You don't know how I developed these skills that I've been using through my coaching. Throughout this presentation, and I'm not going to get worked up here today because it, it took me an hour to map this out on the board. Like, I get fucking chills just thinking about it. This video might take 20 to 30 minutes. I'm going to go ridiculously in depth here. And so many people don't actually know me or what I went through. I talk about business, I talk about starting from the bottom, I talk about women, I talk about how to do all this stuff, but no one knows how I did it. You gotta understand, so many people want the out. They want the out to their masculine frame. They want the out to figuring out how to build their business. And like guys, I, my heart is going so fast right now, if I don't talk calm and explain this slowly, I'm gonna be bouncing off the walls, huffing and puffing, because I get fucking fired up when we talk about this. Background about me. Not only have I started from essentially the ground up when it came to building my masculinity, my charisma, my business, I've also now recently broke $100,000 per month within my business. I've coached over 250 people. So, I mean, that's, you know, a pretty impressive accomplishment. You know, he's made, you know, uh, you know from, from scratch to, to be making 100 grand a month. Huh? Um, I'm not sure if he's hitting a hundred grand every month, but that's, you know, those are great numbers. I and mean, that's, that's, you know, if you keep it up, that's $1.2 million a year. It's a lot of money. So, good job, Casey. People right now, my close members mastermind. Some of the skills I've learned is absolutely profound throughout this past half decade. Here's what you got to understand going into this presentation, building yourself, your masculinity, who you are, figuring out your true authentic self is the hardest fucking thing on planet earth. There's nothing harder. There's nothing that takes longer. Every single day, you're probably going to want to ram. Your you know, I'd probably make a video later. You know, there's the whole idea of an authentic self is kind of a loaded, a loaded question. Um, something that, you know, mystics have been investigating for thousands of years. 
it's way beyond the scope of a Casey Zander video. So let's just let's just do the your authentic self in the way that I think Casey is is talking about. Like remember when you were we were kids, how they would always say you have to be yourself, that kind of shit. Um, there's nothing remotely difficult about that. You know, I think that, I mean, just being yourself is just the way you act when you're not trying to act like anything else. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to it. So I think the fact that Casey would even say this shows a lot of delusion and it shows, um, it really tells you a lot about his mind state. Your head against the door, figuring out how do you get to where you want to be in life so you can look at the mirror and be somewhat happy with who you are. Now, here's the difference between me and a lot of different coaches. I coach dating, which is very different for a guy with my background. Okay, I'm kind of unorthodox. I don't necessarily come from a hardcore pickup artist approach. I don't necessarily come from like a hardcore like NLP tactic or anything like that. The majority of everything that I've taught my students is because it's been a reflection of all of my business mentors. I'm a firm believer that you can get good with women and get good with being, you know, your true authentic self and your masculinity simply by developing good business skills and understanding what you want out of this earth. Let me explain. Um, there may be some crossover. However, it's that's a huge exaggeration. I mean, look at Jeff Bezos. We've seen obviously bad with women. Um, it's not going to, they're not going to translate. It's not being, being good with women and being good at business or again, there may be some correlation and it's possible that if you're not a natural at one, that developing skills at business, if you're not, let's say you're not a natural with women and you're not a natural at business, it's possible, possible that developing your business skills will make you better with women. But that's all I can say. I, I think that if you want to get better with women, you need to work on getting better with women and not try to like, like just count on getting better at business to help you out. And, um, I then I know, of course, obviously from a black belt perspective, you've got to be realistic about what's even possible for you with women and what's possible for you in business. Something that I think Casey doesn't understand, but I'm just responding to his, the first part of his point. So let's continue. In order for me to talk about this today, and by all means, this is the most in-depth video I've ever made. So if you've been a subscriber, tune into this and stay until the end because you can tell there's something different about this. In order for you to understand what I've had to go through, you have to first understand old CZ, old Casey Zander. What was the old Casey Zander like? The old Casey Zander was very shy and very awkward with no skill. Um, well, the shyness seems to have gotten, he seems to have gotten past the shyness and good, good for him. As for awkward, I would say he's still pretty awkward in like kind of a weird way. He's not awkward in kind of like a shy, stumbly way, but I'm not convinced that like he would have a lot more success in sales with his current personality than, you know, his older and dirtier personality. But I think he'd have more success with women. Um to tell you the truth. Okay, if you're shy and you're awkward with no skills, this is going to equal low confidence and low self-esteem. You see how I looked. Okay, I was a skinny fat. You looked so much happier. <laughs> you looked so much happier, man. And he's about saying now that he's skinny fat. No, he's not. He's he's just skinny. He's just, uh, you know, it looks like, um, what do you say? Like, uh, I would say 12% body fat at most, probably more like 10%. You just, he just didn't have any muscle because he was a little kid. But, you know, that's, that's all. Fat kid. I was skinny fat. I didn't have any muscle to my frame. I didn't have any bass in my voice. I was worried in life. I constantly was flooded with anxiety. Did he just admit that he's faking his voice? I can't, I can't, can't tell. I don't, I don't know what he means by bass in his voice. Constantly flooded with, am I good enough? Where, why do I have these insecurities? Why can't I make it? Why can't I figure any of this out? And because of that, I had no skill. I had no skill with work, right? I, I was not any bit successful. I had no skills with women. And because of that, I had no skills in life. Notice the snowball effect as we go down this. What this is going to equal is no personality and no frame. There uh, Casey, you still don't have a personality. And as for frame, I'm, I'm not certain even after and i've watched a lot of casey's Zander videos i really don't know what frame is 
there's no masculine frame or masculine personality if you don't necessarily have any success or any skills. For a lot of you guys that have not put in any amount of work in any area in life yet, it's going to be very hard for you to establish frame in any way, shape, and form or dominance or authority in an interaction or a conversation because you haven't done shit yet. And I'm not saying I've done yeah, this is this is this is insane. This is insane. It makes me wonder if Casey, like, was he homeschooled? Did he not go around? I mean, like, don't you guys remember, like, guys like in third, fourth, fifth grade earlier, guys who were already super confident and super dominant? They hadn't done shit. They they'd done even less shit than me. They were only in third grade. It wasn't even possible for them to have done shit. Accomplishing a lot isn't gonna doesn't make you confident. And it, like a lot of the people, like most confident people, have never accomplished anything. Um. So he he's just so off base here. He's just so wrong. I, I mean, it's just it's just incorrect. You know, it's the thing. you're not going to help anybody by telling them stuff that's just like provably false. You know, oh, shit. Okay, I'm 24. My journey is going to last another 30 years and I hope I can give back even more. So is Casey planning on dying at age 54? I didn't I don't really understand that statement to all of the people who were just like me. Okay, in order for you to understand this, this weak frame right here made me bitter and it made me angry because I was that kid that I didn't date any women in high school. See, the thing I, I mean, I, I kind of think that you, you, I don't know if bitter is, right now, like in your last couple videos, you seem bitter and angry to me. I don't know if the other, I don't, I, the other videos, I can't tell if you're bitter and angry or just really weird. So, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe you were different before, but were you supposed to be bitter and angry in that 2018 Christmas video you put up? Because uh, you seemed like a pretty happy, like well-adjusted young guy then. So, and you look really happy in those pictures. Much happier than you do now. Well, I didn't go to prom. I didn't come from anything where it was like, I was just... Okay, I think that statement does explain a lot. So he, yes, he looked happy as a kid. Then he hit his growth spurt, got into the gym and, you know, started having some more success. But like, I think he was kind of traumatized by those years of being a nerd. Um, maybe he was getting picked on a lot. Even if he wasn't, he just didn't have the social experience or the success with women that he wanted to. And it seems like it gave him this huge feeling of inferior, like in high school and, and before that, he his nerdiness caused him to develop these feelings of inferiority that would continue to follow him, you know, into his, into adulthood. That, that's, that, that's what I think has happened. I don't want to overly psychoanalyze here. Um, but that, that's what it seems like to me. Granted success by being a good athlete or being good in school. Like I, I didn't go to college even cause I couldn't pass. I wasn't smart. I was not a smart kid. I'm still not a smart kid. What I have is insane work ethic. And I Casey's work ethic and drive to be great is genuinely impressive it really is I, I i am i am very impressed by you know by again by his drive and his work ethic i i admire it a lot I crave success i crave success i craved everything that came with it i was thought well maybe if i could get success and figure my own shit out i could get the, the women i could get the money and i could get leadership because with leadership what i really wanted was impact i'm trying not to let my voice carry away because i'll blow up at this like i typically do and it won't be delivered as smooth. Stay with me. Stay with me on this. You're going to need to hear this. What you got to understand when you're at rock bottom, this is why most guys never get success with mentorship or coaching or with women or anything. And I figured this out. You cannot teach will. You cannot teach willpower. You can teach information. You can teach logistics. You can teach facts. You cannot teach will. What I have inside of me is will. I'm not smart. I took college algebra four times. I failed every single time. I was a C student in high school. I had no success with sports. I had no success with my body. I had no success with my charisma. But yet, I managed to figure all of this out because I understood that my will to never quit or to never give up would propel me further than anybody that's been talented that I know. Um, if he's saying that he's gone further than anybody who's talented, that's, that's, that's insane. I mean, didn't you, you grew up in North Dakota. I mean, you probably, you probably knew some guys who went and played division one football and stuff. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Your own father is, has achieved more. Your own father would still be stronger than you if he never touched a weight in his life than you have sp spending all these hours in the gym. Um, 
So, I mean, you've really kind of lost me there. Um, look, the willpower is super impressive, but we've got to be honest about the gifts that Casey did have. Yes, he was a late bloomer. That's true. However, when he did finally bloom at around age 19 or what it is, the thing is, I, I seriously think that Casey thinks that that growth spurt that he hit at age 19 came from lifting weights. I, I seriously think that's, I think he started lifting weights at around age 18 and then hit a growth spurt at the same time. And he thinks that, oh, it's not just the muscles, but my bones getting bigger and my skull getting bigger is from the, uh, from the weightlifting. And, and that's just not how it works, you know? So we even, let's just tell the one thing where you've indisputably had success, Casey, is building up the physique. And you, let's think of what you had. You had a naturally lean and defined physique to begin with, okay? You didn't have to, like, lose weight to get down there. You weren't fat, so there's already something there. Um, you have, I can tell you, you have long muscle bellies. They're not, they're not super long, but they're, they're good long muscle bellies. Third, after you hit your growth spurt, you got an average size frame. So you got an average size frame, good muscle belly length, and you see, it seems, seems like you just are a high responder to training. Um, this, ta this is taking nothing away from the work that Casey put in to develop his physique, you know, credit to him, but he would not have had the, the same success, even in this narrow, even just building a good physique, something that really doesn't matter. He wouldn't have had the success there if he, the genetics hadn't been there first. So, and, 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 and he doesn't understand it. He really thinks he, he did it just with, with will with will and, and, and research and, 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 and grit. And, and it's not true. I mean, all that stuff was important. It played a part, but you got to look at the whole picture and Casey just never does that. And so far it's proven me 100% correct. This is not necessarily me being cocky. This is me stating what's happened through. Right. You're not cocky. You're just delusional about my life and I needed a way out. Okay. I needed a way out so bad because I could not take this state anymore. Okay. You needed a way out. We've seen the video, Casey. You looked, I mean, you, you, that's you with your family. You were having fun. You know, you can tell that, you know, you have a great dynamic with them. And we know, and you're even going to admit this later if you haven't already in, in other videos, that at this time that you were doing this, you were making money, you know, just working from home, you know, giving, teaching people fitness stuff, having success with your clients. Um, you were going out, having fun with your friends. You had a social circle and you were having success with women. We know this. you were all doing this. So, I mean, the fact that you view that state as some kind of hell really just sells more about you. I mean, in one sense, it's impressive, you know, cause it gets back to this sort of drive to be great that Casey has. And on the other sense, it's like, dude, what is wrong with this guy? <laughs> like, why is he, why was he so unhappy with the life he had before? To be weak physically, to be weak mentally, to be weak spiritually, to have no personality because... Spiritually, you are still weak as fuck. I mean, that's... Um, mentally, I'm going to have to say also you're, you're pretty weak still. Um, physically, I mean, yeah, you've got physical strength for... I mean, okay, that's, that's, that's good. I mean, I'm, I'm all for that, but you don't have strength in the other two. So, just got to be, again, some realism here. Because you have no personality, you have no skills, you can't attract a companion, you can't attract a... You don't need... You, Casey, Casey, Casey. <laughs> hey, Casey. One of my viewers has already done Chad fishing with you, okay? So, no personality and stuff. All, she, all he did was put your picture up, put your picture up on Tinder and eHarmony, and get tons of matches. Tons of matches, you know, ju just from, just from you, like, again, that personality had nothing to do with it. Your success, your mission, your purpose, whatever, that had nothing to do with it. It was all, it was all just looks. I know you're talking about more than this, but the thing is to say that, like, no personality is going to kill you with women. Yeah, look, it, it, pers you don't have to tell me that personality has an impact. I mean, I've been, I get attacked by my own viewers for saying that personality matters. But, um... To tell you the truth, we, again, we know that the pre-red pill Casey was having success with women. And I, from what I've seen, the pre-red pill Casey had a much better personality too. So, you know, you're, you're really just, you're really just on the wrong track here again. Significant other. You can't go to get a good job because they don't look at you as someone as an authority figure. They look at you as a pushover. I had serious work to do. You don't understand what I had to go through. So what I did, yeah, it's all been such a struggle for him, was my first love became health and fitness.
Okay, as you can see, I have 400 chan I have 400 YouTube videos on my channel regarding health and fitness. What you're going to see is that it was not me in any of them. My authentic self was never shining through. I was trying to be either Gary V on the camera, or I was trying to be some other fitness influencer. Or I was trying to always. I don't believe this. I mean, I bet, look, maybe in the other videos, yes, but the video we saw with him with his family, I'm convinced that that's the real him. Now, I remember Howard Stern saying that that uh you know his character on on the show was not a character at all his character was just the real him it's that if you heard him before that that was the character that was him putting on a, like a professional front but the the howard you see on the howard stern show that's the real howard um i don't i'm not sure what case he was like in his fitness videos i'm i'm sure that he was probably trying to fake it and stuff but we've seen the real casey we've seen the real casey in that that video i the last video i showed so um, I think we see the real Casey coming out in a lot of these pictures. So, um, you know, I know what it's like to be, to be like insecure about like how you should act and stuff. For me, I got over this all in sixth grade, but I mean, I'm not saying I didn't have insecurities over that after that, but I'm saying I didn't, I, that was after sixth grade was the last time that I ever tried to like act cool or act like a different kind of person than I naturally am. and. Um, I know what that's like, but, um, I don't think that, uh, like him saying that that was always, he, that, you know, he's finally discovered the real him. I, I, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I, I think he believes it, but I don't. Always be something. That's what I was trying to do. But I had a little success with it strictly because I never gave up. Now, as I did this, I coached over 400 clients with fitness and I did it not knowing under, I did it I did it not understanding a single tech skill. I did it not understanding a single business method. I, like I had a basic HTML website, and when I would get a sale transaction through my credit card processor, I would coach them week by week manually on fucking Microsoft Excel. I have no idea what to do at this point. I managed to scrap up 50, 60 K per year the first couple of years. And that's when I started to understand what you need in life to get ahead in every way, shape, and form, financially, with women, with your masculinity journey, everything. Jesus. You need mentors, and you do not need one mentor. You oh need God. a slew of mentors because you are unique. Mm -hmm. And since you are unique, you're going to have to take the uniqueness from all of them to make your authentic self. Keep in mind, back here, I... When you get to the point where you're talking about how you need mentors to be yourself, I mean, you've totally jumped the shark. You shouldn't have to be taught how to be yourself. If there was any, if there's anything in the world that you should be able to do without instruction, it's to be yourself. If you need instruction on how to be yourself, you're not being yourself. I mean, you can't even do that, right? Like, I don't want to be too hard on you, but I mean, I'm just, I'm just flabbergasted here. I had no authentic self because I was not able to take any sort of information, recycle it into my life so it can be applicable. This will all make sense very soon. So I was- I, I, I doubt that. Like, fuck this. My first business I want to start because, you know, I want the women. I want to get the leadership. I want to get the status. Granted, that's not going to necessarily bring it because now I understand that it's all the skill sets you learn by building this. I was like, I need a mentor. The first mentor I ever got was Brandon Carter. So, I mean, you need skill sets to get women? I mean, do, do we have to go over this again? Like, I, mean, I, I, I would cite the example of, like, you know, loser chads who've had some success with women. But, dude, I don't even need to do that. I just go to any college campus in the country, and it's full of slacker normie guys who are getting laid every weekend. I mean, what, what the hell is Casey on here? Okay, Brandon Carter's training for entrepreneurs for fitness influencers or people trying to build their fitness business was great i understood software and systems i understood phone closing he taught basic skills with how to set up good personal branding so that way everything's automated and systemized so your clients can get good results and he taught me how to start tracking true metrics within my finances this is this is all good stuff i'm not familiar with this brandon carter guy however i am familiar with this type of thing of, you know, I'm sure you guys have seen ads too. Ty Lopez is probably the most famous, a guy who's going to say, I'm going to coach you how to make money from home or some shit. And the problem with this is not necessarily always the information per se. In Casey's case, it's not the problem. It's that the it's advertised to the general public or a large public of whom 
only a small percentage can realistically even benefit from it. Casey was one guy who happened to be able to benefit from this Brandon Carter, Carter guy's coaching because Casey already had a business. He had already gone out and started a business. So he had shown that he had the drive, the ability to go and get clients because that's the hard part. Okay. That's the really hard part is teaching people how to go get clients. So Casey can do, he can train people. He's shown he can do that and he can go out and get clients. When you've done that, a mentor can really help for somebody like, you know, Casey, who's like, doesn't really, and just say like, you've got everything, you've got the basics. I'm just going to help you systematize it. Again, I don't know what Brandon Carter's business model is, but if he was trying to say like, he can train somebody like me to be a successful fitness trainer, that would be essentially false advertising. Because, um, you know, it's it, it's not like, again, Casey had all the prerequisites. And that's going to be a problem with a lot of these guys who he talks about going forward. And he's always lived by a saying. He goes, what gets measured gets managed. Okay, what gets measured gets managed. This stuck with me from Brandon Carter for so long. This was my first mentor that I... That's a good, a good saying for business, I agree. I purchased, that I paid for, that I received. This is the guy I would sign into on Zoom, I would talk to. And because I put myself in a spot where success was already happening, what that led me to was figuring out this man right here, this one-of-a-kind all-star man named Sam Ovens. Yeah, he's a one-of-a-kind scam artist. I mean, Sam Ovens is is more an example of what I was talking about. He's, he's part of the problem. I really... <laughs> Sam Ovens is... Look, I think if, if you're interested in learning about Sam Ovens, go to CoffeeZilla's page and, and learn about him. And, you know, you'll see, like, the truth behind it. Sam Ovens, is, and this is where a lot of these guys are going to be. They give you some, some, uh, he's got, like, there's some good sales stuff there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them that. You can see, but that's about all it is. And the course, if you're familiar at all with the course, I know the ads aren't, they used to be ubiquitous. But again, this course is marketed towards everybody. Like everybody on YouTube gets marketed. It's like, hey, would you like to make a ton of money by working from home? So, and, you know, often, you know, the way they tell you to make money is by selling a course yourself. So who would be a great person to benefit from that training? Casey, because he was already in that frame. He was already doing fitness. It was easy for him to translate into doing courses and stuff like that. And I think this is where he really started to go wrong. Um... Because he probably realized, like, I can't really sell fitness courses. I can do fitness training, but I can't sell fitness courses. However, you know, I can sell courses about masculinity and all that shit. And um, so he's like a perfect fit for Sam Evans, but most people aren't. So most people are going to spend $2,000 and they're not going to be qualified to go and do anything. And um, a lot of the shit that, that, uh, that, um, Casey does is sales tactics that are, are are from Sam Evans. Like for instance, when he's saying like, you know, to contact my brother and we'll set you up with the call. And if you're qualified, we'll get you into the program. Dude, that if you're qualified thing is such bullshit. It's such a skeezy thing to say because qualified just means you've got the money to pay for it. That That's all they can. If you can pay, they're going to let you in. Um, that, that's all it is. It's not going to be like, so they say the, if you're qualified, so, so people are calling and being saying like, not knowing what the price point is, they're going in thinking like, then they get back and then Casey's like, yo, you know what? I, I think you can, I think you can, uh, we can work with you in this program. Like he's doing you a favor and to get you all jizzed up and stuff. It's, I mean, sales is an, is a brutal business, but that, that's not cool. That's not cool. That shit is not cool. I mean, especially, and then you go to sell to everybody when, you know, I mean, I guess Casey probably doesn't know any better, but a guy like Sam Oven should know that not everybody is qualified to have success, is going to, is real, is, is qualified to be successful in this field, um, or has the prerequisites. And again, go back, go to CoffeeZilla if that's what you're interested in. But let's see what, let's see what Casey learned from Sam. Okay. And Sam Ovens, I'm a student of Sam Ovens. What I learned from him, you don't want to brag about that, Casey. Him was how to track metrics and KPIs. I also learned more advanced closing tactics. I learned more on really just how to be a full sack entrepreneur. So, you know, honestly, Casey, I, I'm not convinced you're that good a salesman. I mean, you've got a real, you, you speak really well, but I think that like, you know, in like, uh, that I could outsell you. I think I could outsell you. It depends what you mean. Like you could sell your courses better than me, but I'm saying like you gave us, you gave both you and me a list of a hundred prospects uh, to cold call. I think I would do better than you. I think you might do better at getting through gatekeepers because of your voice. But I th especially think if we were actually in the meeting, I think I would close more than you.
because you come off too salesy and you don't, you, you just, somebody like you is going to have a hard time building trust. That's my opinion. I could be wrong. I mean, you got a lot more money than me. So the, uh, so what do I know? Right. Notice because Sam Ovens is also Carter's mentor. I understood that there was perceived value. What do I always say? Full stack masculinity. Where did I understand this concept from Sam with his full stack entrepreneurship and business skills? Because I, so, I mean, he's bragging that he took a nonsensical, a nonsensical, uh, statement from Sam and then used it in his thing. So full stack business skills, that doesn't mean shit, but it's less meaningless than full stack masculinity, which nobody, absolutely nobody knows what that means. Um, certainly Casey himself doesn't. Um, you know, full stack, my understanding, look, I used to be a computer programmer and my understanding is that full stack comes from saying a full stack developer. Um, that's at least, my, I mean, maybe, unless maybe they got it from somewhere else, but it's saying you're full stack means that you develop like with the uh, the database, the client, and the server, and then may, and maybe it means some other shit like you develop like a, I don't know like maybe it means like you're you're also like can do machine code and know how to do the hardware. It, it, it mean could mean a lot of things. I, I know that I used to on my resume say that I was a full stack developer. I would say I was a full stack web developer because like I said, I did the database, the client, and the server. So as opposed to just being a I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I think pretty much, well, there, there are some strictly client side people, but I don't think there's like, uh, I don't think there's really a ton of them, but, but maybe, but that's, it really is just more of a buzz phrase than anything else. Um, so yeah. Met Brandon Carter. I was able to understand Sam Ovens coaching and I was able to meet Sam Ovens consulting group because I met Sam Ovens consulting group. I now met his senior sales rep and his. And here we've got one of these problems with these guys. This was something that I noticed from the very beginning when, when I started seeing these types of guys, with Sam Ovens and anything like that, who are selling a program that's going to tell you how to make money from home. And it's like, okay, two huge problems. Jump out without anything else. Let's, let's say all their information is good. Two huge problems. One, um, if they're making so much money in their own business, why are they selling you a course on how to make money, like make money from home. Shouldn't they be busy running their own business too? And this is, this is to me is the real big one. Why are they, why are there people working for them? They, they always have this staff and people working for them, selling their course, managing their program. Well, wait, shouldn't all those people be running their own businesses from home? Why are they working for Sam if, if his program works, you know? And I mean, the, the, like I, there's, I've asked the people who've been in, who've been in these different things, and they have answers that are at least somewhat satisfying. So I'm not, I'm not saying that they're all nonsense or stuff like that, but I'm saying it's enough that you need to be wary. Senior sales rep was David Dre. Okay, at this point, I'm running advertising for my business. My YouTube is not popped off whatsoever. I have legitimately six, seven hundred subscribers. I've been doing this for three, four years, slaving away at the camera every day. No fucking success. I did not give up. This is what you have to understand. Stop giving up. Stop giving up. Stop, stop, like stop. You, you approach one girl and you think that crushed your whole night because she... I mean, on one hand, again, like the, the drive worked for you. Um, that's good. I'm not going to, certainly not going to encourage people to give up. The problem is just that sometimes you have to understand sometimes, you know, what you're doing isn't working as, you know, it seems like you, you didn't just keep doing the same thing. He, he went out and, you know, found other, he didn't give up, but he like went out to try to find something else. And then that worked. And so, but, uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is that sometimes it's just not meant to be, you know, sometimes, you know, you just don't have the tools or it just isn't going to happen. Like, you know, we've seen businesses on Shark Tank and stuff that the people really believed in, they put a lot of time in. And then, you know, you know, that, they either should give up or they ended up having to give up because the, the product, as much as they believed in it, as much as they put their time into it, it just wasn't happening. You know, it just wasn't there. So, um, I mean, if you want to say don't give up ever trying to have success, uh, okay, I think there's at least something to that. But there's also times where you've got to move on and accept defeat. So let's, don't just say just gonna never give up, all right? If you don't succeed at first, try, try again. That's, that's maybe okay for a kid's movie, but not good life advice. It's just too, it's just too general.
she didn't want to give you the phone number and you don't you don't talk to anybody else at the bar you don't do anything you think because you were not able to close one sale that your business is shit and you'll never do it again dude you need to understand that you cannot give up because if I would have gave up I would have never actually got to the point to deliver you this message here because I signed up with Sam Lovins in so if uh, Casey had given up, he wouldn't have been able to coach people about how to be full stack masculinity. So thankfully, Casey never gave up. In his consulting, David Dre introduced me to Sonny Leonard Doozy. You might know her on YouTube. She's a fabulous woman. She's one of my most, I, I cannot tell you the amount of love I have for Sonny Leonard Doozy. She's a wonderful woman. She was my consultant and she taught me how to start getting more YouTube subscribers, how to actually speak to my audience the right way. Yeah. If I would have never met David Dre, I could have never met Sonny Leonard Doozy. Because I met her as a mentor, she introduced me to Alex Becker's training. And Alex Becker's training, I speak to Alex multiple times for a week. Here's yeah, you know, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with this dude. Um, it's it's the other thing. It's like, is what Alex is doing a total scam? No. The information that he has can work. That they, It can work. It's based on shit that's done for him. That, but, but. Most people who buy his course are not going to have the wherewithal to be successful with it. And I know what he would say. He would say, oh, well, that's because they just didn't do the work. Uh-huh. No, man, it, it's it's a tough business. It's tough and it requires some skill. And it's not just plug and plug and play. You can't just put a template out and have everybody who buys the course be successful with it. Even have most people who buy the course be successful with it. Furthermore, any single thing you get in Alex Becker's course, you can get for free online. You can look it all up for free online. You can find for free shit on YouTube. You you don't need that shit. So you're going, I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of a, I mean, it's kind of a scam, you know? Here's what I really love about Alex, is that Alex will teach you how to handle stress within your business. When I hit... Dude, if, if I wanted somebody to help me manage stress, you know, I'd go to a shrink or something. I don't need to buy some bullshit course off the internet about how to drop ship wolf mug cups, you know, wolf mugs. And, uh, you know, that's that's not your job. Don't the, the, That's not what he's advertising. He's advertising this course is going to make you money from home. Uh-huh. You're going to let you successfully run over. Not I'm going to help you how to manage your business stress, especially since Casey, by the time he goes to Alex, is already making is making money and stuff. So, again, he's a guy who can benefit from it. That's not how Alex advertises himself, you know? I mean, really, Casey is – I don't know about the first guy, Brandon Carter, but Casey – and I don't know about Sonny. She may be the legitimate too. But Casey is better than better than Sam, better than the other two guys, right, with their, you know, with their snake oil. I mean, Casey's snake oil too, but it's snake oil that at least, you know, at least Casey is, oops. Sorry. At least Casey is like, you know, going to have some success, you know, with his shit. You know, and he's not, he may be telling you bullshit, but it's it's going to bullshit that's going to not only work for some people, but he's not going to tell you he's going to make you rich. So he's better than those other guys. Hit my first 50k month last month he said with your rois that should have been a 200k month instantly that man will hit you right where it hurts because he knows how to keep you going as soon as i understood this and i was no longer fearful of going all in i scaled and i had my first 100k month here's what you're going to understand dude casey casey uh you know if you want me to send you messages on facebook saying like uh, you should be making more money. I, I'm glad. I'll do that every every month for a lot less than he will. I mean, I'm not sure what he's charging you, but you want to give me like 50 bucks a month to do it? I will. And that goes for any of you guys in the comments too. You give me your Facebook messages, start sending me 50 bucks a month, and then I will just tell you that however much you made in the previous month is not enough and you should be doing four times that. So 50 is as low. You know, I can go to 40. That's it. But other than that... uh you're going to have to pay, but it's still going to be less. It's still going to be cheaper than what Alex is charging. Throughout this, when it comes to anything, when it comes to your dating, when it comes to your masculinity, when it comes to who you are in business, none of the people you look up to did it all by themselves. If you look at me at this whiteboard and you think, man, I wish I could talk fluently like Casey without saying ha, mm, um, what, mm. I wish I could know this stuff. I wish I could build the body. I wish I could do it all. You have to understand that everybody, even the people that I look up to, none of them necessarily did it themselves. Brandon Carter referenced Sam Ovens, which means he's taking things from Sam Ovens. Guess what? Brandon Carter...
It's quite a circle jerk these scam artists have going. You know, they, they all reference each other and they refer each other. You know, they give they provide referrals to their clients. So some clients like, oh yeah, yeah, you know, Sam Ovens is great, and then Sam refers them to somebody else, and this shit just is one big, you know, grifter circle. Always mentions Matt Gallant. Matt Gallant was one of Brandon Carter's very first mentors when it came to marketing. If you look at Sonny Leonard Doozy, Sonny Leonard Doozy is also a student of Sam Ovens. Guess what happens? I'm also a student of Sam Ovens. Alex Becker is also a student of Sam Ovens. And what happens is that... Wow, everything is making a lot more sense now. You start to understand that people need to network. People need to meet other people who are successful. But these people all networked to sell courses. I mean, what is that? Is that what the future of America is to just sell courses to people? Even that's what Casey does. He just sells courses. There's no like, I mean, and I'm not saying that value isn't being produced, but you can see how this is just a really like, um, it's almost like a Ponzi scheme type thing. Well, people need to hold the right frame in their life within themselves and develop their are you ever going to define what frame is? Like, I mean, you keep, you've been talking about it for so long, I still don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Authentic self, strictly by oh, no. going Another where ad. they can get to the next level. Hey guys, check this out. I just got IT certified from home. After only four months of attending my computer career. Let's just pretend that never happened. This is going to make sense in a second. If you guys follow Russell Brunson... Who? Russell Brunson always mentions Dan Kennedy. And if you look at Sam Ovens, Sam Ovens always references David Ogilvie. What I'm telling you is that whoever you look up to, they originally looked up to somebody else. And if you look up to me, what's going to happen is that you've got to understand that who I am, my authentic self, has only shined through because everybody else's authentic self has shined in a way to impact myself. It's the value impact delivering one step at a time that changes somebody's life. And you can't actually hold frame you can't know who you are. You can't approach the girl with true confidence. You can't do anything unless you know what you're about and what skills you have or create. A lot of you guys know this guy. A lot of you guys know this guy right here, Owen. If you look at oh, RSC, okay. why does RSC, why does he constantly reference marketing? Why is he a pickup artist? Because he's a scam artist. I mean, look, and you couldn't even get find a nice picture of him. I mean, Owen, like we, we look, with the, the story's been... We know the deal with Owen, you know, was, was, what's the name of the, what's his, uh, who's that, who's that one dating coach who knows him, who's been bashing him for a long time? I know, and he's a psychopath himself, but he was saying that, like, it's, like, well known in the circle that, you know, Owen's lay count is, like, in the 50s, um, in terms of, like, unique women he's been with, which is still, I mean, it's, that's gross, still too many, but, um, the guy, the guy's, like, full of shit, his things are staged, and have you ever seen Owen's pickup, it's it's horrible. It's like, it's horrendous. It's really bad. Go watch it if you don't believe me. I mean, look, give, give him credit for putting it out there, but it's terrible. Like, and some of it isn't even real. It's staged and he still sucks at it. I mean, this isn't, this is not a good look, Casey, that you're, that you're citing Owen. That's not good. But he constantly references that he's made eight to nine figures through his business. It's because everything... It's called flexing, you moron in life is interlinked who you are is interlinked this is why i talk about being full stack as a man if you look at grant cardone he says study from the top because he says study from the top one of the things that i've always told my people my clients my viewers my people that follow this channel i always say hey guess what if you're not willing to do what one percent of men are willing to do you're the going to get 99 percent of men's results which is mm -hmm. basically zero you've probably heard me say that on this channel a million times no no i've never heard you say that so I don't, what are you talking about and i'm glad you mentioned it this time because no I, it's great saying and no, i've never heard you talk about the 99 percent before times in a row if you look at my current client marcus rice what does he have in that bio he has one percenter what i'm telling you is that energy is transferable success is transferable confidence is transferable and guess what? You have to go where the success is. If you're not going where the success is, you're not going to get success. Why do we have over 250 members in the masculinity blueprint right now? Why am I able to change a man's life? How he walks, talks, acts, and... Dude, guys, I seriously want to, like, if I had the money... Nah, no, I wouldn't. I was about to say, if I had the money, I would join this program just to, like, you know, come back to you guys <laughs> about all the shit that gets said. But nah, that, first, of all, I'd, first of all, I think that there would be legal problems if I did that. Second of all, it's just, like... That's that's not very nice. The uh, but um, dude, this is this is this is bad. This is bad.
and things in dating through business, it's because the perceived value built within that man through understanding who he is, is the greatest amount of change or tactic because when you fundamentally change somebody's belief system, you fundamentally change who they are and that is the best thing you can give a man outside of any other tactic or... See, I'm not so sure that fundamentally changing somebody does change who they are. I mean, I would say that like in, in one sense, my beliefs have pretty fundamentally changed from a few years ago and I feel like I'm basically the same guy, just more depressed pickup line or anything like that. What happens when you start to see it's possible? What happens when you start to get hooked? Well, you get hooked to the success because every single micro win works. When you look at old Casey compared to Casey from back then, every single micro win that I had, whether it be talking to a girl or when I'd go through my hookup phase and I'd sleep with a new girl or maybe now getting a girlfriend that I've actually had quality with instead of just a bunch of hookup party sex. It's like, Every 1% gain would still win. Every 1% gain built the confidence and you start to get hooked because deep inside you start to remember where you come from. And when you talk to that woman and she's a total dime and you're, you're loving this and you're getting a good reaction, that does something to the confidence. You're now expecting to get a good result the next time you go into it. When you close a good sale or when you're doing great in work or in business or in your occupation, guess what happens? You're going to get addicted to that micro cess. And guess, guess what happens? Women knowledge of how to interact and how to carry yourself goes up money will go up because you have proof of wins and guess what proof of attitude proof of attitude is what's going to get the right people to invest in you whether it be a potential woman you're talking to whether it be somebody in business whether it be anything you're doing in life you have to have the grit and you have to get hooked to have success this is why i say you need results if you're not actually getting results you need to start to change yourself so that way you can get results because that's going to actually truly build your authentic self. So what is full stack masculinity? Why do I reference this in my coaching? Let me give you an example how everything is interlinked. If you look at an old Elliot Hall's video, I can't even remember which video it is. He talks about how during sex, the woman receives. Okay, the woman receives. Like if men do the <laughs> women get <laughs> okay? Oh man, I was already nauseous. Casey, just no, please, please stop. Because of that, that one thing clicked in my head and I was able to get a client outside of approach anxiety because I started to explain to him that his will that he's willing to put out into the world, his will that he's willing to put on to a potential woman to say hello, he's exerting himself into the world. He's actually the one doing the f What's going to happen is that he's now understanding what it means to be a man. That right there, that one defining thing was able to get my student out of approach anxiety so that way he can talk to women. Guess what happens, Car You telling him that was enough to cure his approach anxiety? I mean, this is, this is like the thing that I want to, you know, talk about. It's like, look, he's obviously, Casey's obviously having success with his clients. We, we don't know the success rate. We don't, I mean, I, we do know is that he's bringing him into this bullshit cult stuff, but that's, that's a fact. Um, and he's probably, you know, he's charging them for every monthly fee for as long as he can. Um, we don't know, and, he, and he's probably upselling them in the course too, unfortunately. Um, the, but we don't know, uh, his success rate and, you know, but the thing is, obviously there is value being produced, just like there really is some value with Sam. I mean, look, Sam Ovens is a scam artist, but he helped Casey. That's a fact. Although, unfortunately, what he did was help Casey to be a better scam artist. But even scam artist Casey is helping people. He's helping things. It's like, it's it's not worth the price, but that's what, and then to me, that's worse than if it was a pure scam. If it was a pure scam, you could just say it's trash and then, you know, walk away and it wouldn't be anything of it. But because there is some value, it's able to fool Casey himself and fool a lot of other guys. And it's more damaging because there's some value in it, you know? I mean, if it, you wouldn't, you wouldn't scam as many people if it was just complete bullshit. Cardone, Grant Cardone. One of the great lines that he uses for closing objections is he says this. He goes, "There's only two reasons that you wouldn't want to work with me right now." He says, "Either A, you don't think this is going to work, or B, you don't think that you're going to use it. So which is it?" I'm sorry. That's 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 good stuff. That's good stuff. That's it's not the way I close. I don't I don't I don't do like any hard closing. It, I think you guys would agree it doesn't fit with my personality. But uh, yeah, no. Look, if you've got, I mean, first of all, Grant Cardone sucks, scam artist. But if he, uh, but we're, in terms of salesmanship, I don't even think he's a good salesman. But the, uh, but if you've got his personality, like that, like that hard closing 
can be effective. That kind of hard close that he talked about there can be effective. Um, it really, it really can. But again, it's, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise it for everybody. It really, it's, it, it depends on what you're selling. It depends on, you know, how you come off. Just, you know, you got to find what works for you, what works for your product, what works for your client. I've used this to help men in my consulting group with Masculinity Blueprint to help them with pickup objections. I've said if you get hit with a girl who's not wanting to give you the phone number, I'd say, hey, there's only two reasons why you wouldn't want to give me this phone number right now. Either A, you think this is super awkward because you haven't been approaching in a while, or B, you're just not attracted to me. And if it's B, I want you to tell me. If it's A, we got to get to the bottom of this so that way we can be comfortable with each other. Um, that's, I, I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's good advice. Would I ever say it? No, but I would never go hit on some random girl. So I, I don't know, credit where credit's due. Because I think this can go somewhere. You see what happens when a man has belief in himself. Everything is interchangeable. Everything is interlinked. Who you are and the dedication that you put into the gym reflects what type of business results you're going to get. Where you put your time and study from is going to dictate who you talk to and who's in your social circle. Now in my social circle at the drop of a hat, I have multiple, multiple seven-figure people that I can talk to on a day-to-day -day basis. So you're probably sitting there going, what is me? Like, Casey, what are you even? And I don't know because my... Well, that's not surprising. Uh, I think we can leave it there. So all, all this stuff, all this if a true self, it appears that Casey still doesn't even know who he is. That's... Uh... That's not good. That's certainly not ideal. Um, yeah, so uh, again, you know, sorry about the length, but uh, this was, um, I don't know, I think we learned something, you know, like just about like, you know, Casey's Casey's background from all this shit. I mean, it's, I'd still like to know exactly like what went wrong totally. So I, think, I guess it's like, I don't know, it's some, like way, somewhere he discovered the red pill and I just don't know if was it a reaction to a bad breakup or what. Another thing is he's got this, uh, one commenter was pointing out in you know two video like the two the video like where you can see how much Brittany loved him that like she's like leaning up against him and he doesn't he never has his arm around her which is like which is, so is Casey doing that just because he's afraid of being of like a, he just isn't comfortable with human contact which would be a personality quirk but which is I mean really weird but understandable there there are a lot of people there's some like totally normal people who just hate that like they won't even hug close family members. Um, in case he could just be one of those guys or is it some like like is it because he had a bad breakup and was damaged and is afraid of intimacy or is it like some real weird red pilled shit it would be good to know It'd be fun to know like exactly what the hell is going on here um so i guess the only way we're gonna find out is to just keep watching and hope that more truth comes out that's all for now see you in the next